Hi folks, uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about redox carriers, especially the mechanisms of NAD and NADH redox. And recall that NAD and NADH are obligatory two electron carriers. They are not large enough uh, to do one electron carriers to make stable radicals, so they have to carry two electrons at a time. And that means, in this case, that we're going to be moving uh, usually two electrons, and then we're going to be getting a hydrogen as well. So we usually see this in the form of an H added. So RH. So R going to RH. Uh, typically, in order to add a hydrogen onto something, though, it has to have a labile bond. So you might see something like this. R double bond O goes to RHOH. So one of these bonds to oxygen is used to bond to the new hydrogen on the hydroxyl group. The other bond um, is um, added from the carrier. So NADH would add this on. So in order to do this one, uh, we're going to use the example of lactate dehydrogenase, which is an enzyme, if you recall, dehydrogenases are all enzymes that do redox. That's what dehydrogenase means. It's actually, if you look at the name, an ACE is an enzyme, an enzyme that removes hydrogen. Hydrogen is the key word, it's not water. So we're going to be adding or removing an, a hydrogen, and a hydrogen is a proton uh, and it's electron. In this case, it's two electrons for the bond and one for the proton. In this case, we're going to be taking the hydrogen off of lactate. It's lactic acid. Okay, so it's going to be a redox enzyme that removes the hydrogen, a bond, and a, a proton from a lactate, and so it's named that way. So our reaction here is going to be NAD, which is our oxidizing agent, plus L-lactate, our substrate, goes to pyruvic acid or pyruvate plus NADH plus AH+. We'll see that in a second where that goes. Uh, thermodynamics for this reaction are as follows, as written, the standard uh, cell potential between uh, products and reactants is negative 0.185 volts. And if you recall, the negative means that it's unfavorable. Naturally unfavorable under standard state conditions. Uh, we can convert between delta E uh, and delta G using the simple equation NF delta E is equal to delta G naught. And in this case, uh, it's a two electron transfer. Recall that NAD and NADH are two electron carriers. So for N, we can plug in our two. Um, I'm going to use kilojoules per mole here. So I'm going to use 96.5 kilojoules per volt mole. And then our delta E is our negative 0.185 volts. And that gives us a free energy change of 35.705 kilojoules per mole free energy. So under standard state conditions, we end up with a very unfavorable reaction, in fact, um, between NAD and lactate to produce pyruvate. But this is a very key reaction in biochemistry. Uh, anytime that your body produces lactic acid, like uh, when you're exercising or doing anything involving exertion, where you're unable to get full aerobic uh, breakdown of pyruvate, uh, in order to regenerate NAD, pyruvate is uh, reduced to lactate. Uh, and then that's sent out to be to, to your liver to be made back into glucose. Um, so if you're ever in a situation where your heart can't keep up with your energetic demands, you're going to do uh, this direction spontaneously. But then you also need to regenerate that um, sometimes. And so you're going to burn that lactate back to pyruvate. In this case, we have our NAD, our lactate, uh, and then the enzyme itself has a play, part to play in this. Um, normally what's going to happen is some random base would have to come around and pull off a hydrogen. But in this case, uh, LDHs, lactate dehydrogenase, has a histidine at amino acid 195. And that's going to be used as our base, a general base. So this reaction is going to start like, like so. The base is going to pull off the most acidic hydrogen and give a pair back to oxygen. So that's pretty easy to do. Um, now, the pKa here is shifted by other amino acids around. The reason this is able to progress, usually the pKa here would be very large 
Um, and this would be very hard for a weak base like histidine to do. But because we have a reducing um, system here, we're going to be uh, reducing our lactate, um, or sorry, we're going to be reducing our NAD to NADH and oxidizing our lactate, this is allowed to proceed. So here's the next step here. We have NAD, we have a deprotonated L-lactate, and then we have a protonated base. In order to proceed here, what we need to do is either go backwards and grab that hydrogen back off, or we can do a oxidation uh, to pyruvate. So in this case, we'd have to lose this H um, and its pair of electrons. Remember, this is two electrons and a proton. We'd have to lose this whole thing in order to oxidize this carbon. This one is already fully oxidized. There's really not a lot we can do with this carbon. So the only oxidizable carbon is here at position two. To do this, all we have to do is to form the double bond, and then we're going to force our hydrogen and its pair of electrons off as a leaving group. This is only allowed as a leaving group because we have an oxidizing agent around, something to accept that hydrogen and its pair. So this guy is going to come on at this position specifically of, of the, the ring, and that's going to push electrons here onto the nitrogen. So that is an example of, um, of, of an oxidation using NAD. So our final product is going to look like this. You can see we have NADH formed. It's the one with the hydrogen attached to it. We have our pyruvic acid or pyruvate here. And then we have our protonated HB+, which a water can come along or maybe transfer off to another amino acid and grab that H+, and stabilize things. And that's going to give us our free H+, that was in the balanced equation. But let's talk a little bit more about this system here. One thing we have with NAD is we have an aromatic ring. And of course, that's a very good thing, very uh, favorable uh, for our system. Um, we also have a positive nitrogen, which is not that favorable because uh, nitrogen is an electronegative atom and it doesn't want uh, to share its electrons more than it must. And so, our nitrogen is a negative thing, it's an unfavorable thing. So we have, a, we have a system where we have a very happy system with an aromatic ring, but we also have a little bit of unhappiness in the, in the ring with our positive nitrogen, and that's going to lead to a little bit of a bistability here. This is going to want the aromaticity, but it's going to not want to have the charge on nitrogen. When we look at NADH, what have we traded off? We have no aromaticity. Okay. Um, but we have a neutral nitrogen, so that's favorable. And so it's happy to be in NADH, but it's also happy to be NAD. And we can push it one way or the other, and the balance is not necessarily one-to-one. -one. Um, I would think aromaticity is a lot more favorable uh, than just a neutral nitrogen, which we actually uh, can see if we go back to our equation. In this case, we have a delta G of positive 35, which means that it favors the reactants. That means that our NAD is stable. This set of reactants on this side is more stable than the set of products is written. So again, there is a, st there is a switch here. It might be harder to throw the switch in one direction than the other, but they do exist stably in both states, the NADH and the NAD. So that's our idea here. Um, in this case, what we're going to see is uh, a stable product of pyruvate released and that's going to make us um, relatively uh, happy as a system. I'm going to erase some of this so we can talk a little bit more about the reverse reaction in a second. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the math that goes into this. Uh, if delta G for the lactate to pyruvate reaction is 35.705 kilojoules per mole, which is what we saw, what is the minimum ratio of pyruvate to lactate that will allow the reaction to proceed towards products? And we can assume something. Uh, we know that in catabolic metabolism, we end up with a lot of acceptors, a lot of oxidizing agents, because it is an oxidative metabolism. 
and we have little uh, of our reduced piece because we're cashing in all that NADH for energy through electron transport. So what we're going to do here is we want to find the minimum ratio of pyruvate to lactate. So what we said was lactate plus NAD goes to pyruvate plus NADH plus H plus. And we said that the delta G naught prime for this reaction is 35.705. kilojoules per mole. So that's really that's really all we need to know here. Uh, we also know a couple things. We know our ratios. So if we're going to solve for the minimum amount of our reactant, we're going to actually need to um, solve some free energy equations. Specifically this one, where we can link our standard free energy, which is given in the equation, to the actual direction or progress of the reaction. Uh, as a function of what our temperature is and how much reactants and products and our mass quotient is. So let's start working on this guy. Q we could write as NADH times pyruvate all over NAD times lactate. And we can plug in some of the things. We know NAD to NADH is 1,000, which means that we're going to have 1 over 1,000 over here. And then we're going to solve for the reaction of pyruvate to lactate. That's going to be the, what we're solving for. We know our delta G is 35.705. Our R uh, is in kilojoules per mole. So that means we're going to use 8.314 times 10 to the negative third kilojoules per mole Kelvin. Uh, our temperature is going to be 310.15 Kelvin because it's 37 Celsius times the log of Q. And if we want the minimum ratio, we're going to have to set delta G equal to zero, because that's the point at which uh, our reaction switches from spontaneous to non-spontaneous. And so I'm going to start doing some math here. Move the 35.705 to the other side. Do some combining of terms. 8.314 times 10 to the negative third times 310.15. So that all together is 2. Point, and we'll see this a lot. 2.578 log of Q. And we can divide both sides by 2.578. So I get negative 13. 0.85 equals the natural log of Q. E to both sides. I get rid of the log. We end up with a Q equal to 9.7 times 10 to the negative seventh. And that equals 1 over 1,000 X. Okay. So let's get rid of the 1,000 by multiplying by 1,000 here. Uh, x is equal to 9.7 times 10 to the negative fourth. So if we, as long as our pyruvate to lactate ratio is 9.7 times 10 to the negative fourth, this reaction uh, will proceed. So we just need a lot less pyruvate than we have lactate. So we need a lot of lactate, very little pyruvate to make this reaction proceed. So that's the math you can do with this reaction. But I'm going to go back a little bit to uh, our chat about uh, our mechanism. So here's where we left off. We said we had lactate um, turned into pyruvate, the oxidized form of lactate. And we had NADH, the reduced form of NAD. And we had a protonated histidine. So if we're going to go the other direction, um, which all enzymes allow, they allow forward and reverse progress, we're going to have to uh, undo what we just did. So here we're going to go from NADH plus pyruvate, plus hydrogen, goes to NAD, plus lactate. And if you recall, our delta G naught from the other one was negative, was positive 35, so this one's going to be negative 35.705 kilojoules per mole. Very favorable in this direction 
Again, because NAD and lactate are more stable than pyruvate and NADH, and that whole reaction favors this side. Entropically speaking, we also have more pieces on this side, and we're going towards a more ordered system. So that must mean that the enthalpic gain we get from NAD and lactate is much larger than the entropic loss we're seeing of ordering those in from three to two pieces. But this is a very favorable reaction. So if we're going to start this, what we're going to start with is um, oxidizing our, our uh, reducing agent to NAD. So let's start by oxidizing. And we're going to use this guy as our uh, oxidizing agent. So let's push our and undo our arrows just like we did last time. We want to regain aromaticity. And we're going to push this hydrogen and its pair onto pyruvate's two position. If we do that, we're going to break octet, so we need to give a pair of electrons back to the oxygen. So what we've just done here is we have oxidized our NAD, H to NAD. And we also have a deprotonated lactate, which we can then easily protonate from the nearby histidine. And so our final product is NAD plus lactate goes to uh, is NAD plus lactate, and that's very favorable. So hopefully that was helpful. Thanks, guys.